five. There it is. My favorite show starts now. Damn right. Hey. You damn right. <laughs> oh, did it just start? It was on auto start. Okay. Well, we're going live. Everybody, hi everybody. <laughs> if you heard that, I'm sorry. Um well, all right. This show started because our YouTube uh uh, thing was set to auto which it usually isn't so here we go let's pretend like that didn't happen and no let's intro? go live all right. <laughs> nick do you want to do you want to start the intro yeah all right here we go what do i say What do I say? Live. Live. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Los Angeles. <laughs> There's a lot of new faces that I'm seeing here. So, Nick, Ooh, let's introduce ourselves and let's talk about what this show is what? and oh. why it started off on the most insane, chaotic possible moment. Look at this. We've got Clever, Sophia. Look at all these new names. Seda, this nice is to awesome. see you. Hello, everyone. Um, Welcome, everybody. All right, Nick. Yeah, we why, are... why did this happen? What is the vibe of this show and what do we do? Why here? did this happen? A little over three years ago? Three yes. years ago? Yep. We started when everybody was home because we thought, hey, where can we all go as creatives once a week to hang out, do some fun stuff, portfolio reviews, product launches, deep dives into some of the applications. But most of all, we're just helping you up your creative game in every way possible. Yes. Right? And this show is your favorite dumpster fire here on the W Live. We like to keep it really casual. Nick and I are really casual, uh, fun guys. Nick and I both do brand identity um, as freelancers. And so we are here with you. If you're a creative professional, if you're someone who's getting started in design, we're one of you. And we like to just hang out. Sure, we're on W Live, but we like to have fun with y'all. So today we are going to be having a lot of fun. It is going to be a good episode. Mm. It's going to be great because we are talking about Nick. What is our theme for the episode? Brand, baby. Yeah, we're talking about brands. So we are going to be doing a really fun exercise that you can do with us at home if you want to fire up Illustrator. And that exercise is going to be Brand Slam. Uh, we are going to... That hopefully this is something that we like keep doing. I just thought about that right now. It's really good. Brand Slam Mix-Up. Brand Slam Mix-Up. Uh, we are yeah. going to be taking one brand and trying to reimagine it as another brand. So you can do that with us at home. Um, if you want a little preview, I'm going to pop over to Nick's screen. We are doing these brands. If you want to start doing some research, fire up Illustrator. Sprite in the style of Snapple and Hershey's. Same category. Same category. Hershey's in the style of the Los Angeles Dodgers. So we're going to be doing brand slam between those two. So you can go open your tabs, do some research, start to understand. Uh, but before we get there, we are going to talk about branding. Uh, Nick, what is branding? Give us, give us a broad <laughs> overview of branding. <clears throat> I would say branding is the all-encompassing personality of a particular company, offering, or product. How does that sound? That sounds like you read it from Wikipedia. Is no, how that I did not. I, <laughs> that I was good. Not. That was really good. Gold star for Nick. Because Nets. we've done this enough, right? We've yes. done this enough. We've, we've, we've lectured on it hundreds of times. And uh, it's my favorite thing that I love about the industry. Me too. Yeah. Um, so yeah, gold stars um, and someone says brand, brand office hours with a brand opening. Yeah, we do have a little custom opening because uh, and look at we're, we're branded around us. All of mm -hmm. the things you look and experience are part of the brand, including the chaotic nature. Um, if yeah. you see me, and this is this is just a side discussion, but if you see me on other streams, I'm usually much more buttoned up. I'm more professional. I'm more like, hey everybody, welcome to Adobe Live. Let's learn something today. But the brand of office hours is much more casual. And that's why we roll in. We're yeah. just like, hey, what's going on, guys? Let's like hang out and party. Um, because well, we that's that. our. If you look at our brand assets that we have, right? You got structured, cool graphic things, but then we have these chaotic things, and we use those things. We use those like scribble things and a lot of those fun stuff. I think that was on purpose, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. We try to make it really chaotic and fun to just yeah. kind of uh, get the uh, brand going again. So we're talking about branding. So hello, Howard Pinsky in the chat. What's up, what Howard? Is up, Howard? So Nick, up, let's Wade? hop on and let's, let's talk it. about brands. Uh, we are going to be doing a fun thing, which I think Howard would actually have a lot of fun with. Oh, Howard, you gotta, if you just you gotta join us. Yeah, yeah. If you just if you just came on, Howard, we're doing something that maybe you should do for some content down the road, which would be really fun. We're doing a brand slam. We are going to yeah. be doing Sprite in the style of Snapple and Hershey's in the style of of the Dodgers. Um, so I just think 
I think Howard would have fun with that. All right, so let's hop in. Let's talk about branding. Let's talk about what it is. And let's look at some new rebrands that just happened, Nick. This one came out this morning, yesterday. Like, it is brand brand new. This is today, guys. Hot off the presses. Our favorite glass door. I didn't even remember their previous one, as a matter of fact. Um, We all know them. Glass door is a online you know, job hunting, recruitment thing, correct? Yes. Um, and I gave you the link there, so we're, we're good to go, where we can p- kind of pop up the rest of them there. Oh, yes, but, let's take a look. Yeah, there we go. Uh, let's so this, see what they have. This one is like, I think one of my favorites, and I just saw it when Nick uh, sent it over, but I think mm-hmm. this is one of my favorite rebrands that I've seen, like, in a while. Um, what oh. makes you, like, even just from the, the beginning there, do you have it or do you need me to grab uh, it? No, I need to log in real quick. I'm not oh, logged no in worries. on this computer. Yeah, so I think it got it got me off guard too because I was one, I was like, what was their previous identity like? But I was really curious to see what the meaning was and the way they used the um, apostrophes and the fact that they went for a much bigger, bolder brand without really a icon. I'm noticing word marks are becoming so much more popular lately. Don't yes. you see that? Yes. And I think that like the um the apostrophes, again, I think is where branding is going, is it's about mm-hmm. elements and how those elements work together. I also love apostrophes in branding. I just think it's oh such a gosh, niche thing to like GD. have fun with. It's yeah, that's- glass door. It's the G and the D. Like, well, wow. okay, here's my take though. So much good meaning. Um it is this. Good like work. it yeah. is a hundred percent just this though. Mm-hmm. Right? Uh yeah. Yeah. It's but same that thing. is They've, they've found a way to have multiple meanings on multiple different levels. I yep. love that. It's and so their fun. old logo had basically that same configuration. I didn't know that as well either back with the old one that, that made a GD. Yep. Interesting. And okay. so what's cool is you can see here, this is, when we talk about branding, this is branding. This is all those pieces coming together to kind of create an experience, a voice, yes. um, and a look and feel. We got colors. We got everything here. Um, you got your glass door sands. Look at that. They've got their own. Oh, it's really nice. Ugh, everybody has a custom font nowadays. Of course. Well, let's look at the whole thing in general. I, I think it's a very carbon copy of a lot of other tech uh, rebrands we've seen. I got to say, though, I think they have a very unique creative style with their illustrations. I agree. These are some of the, they feel like old, almost family circus meets like, I don't, uh, what else? Like it's, I love the almost charcoal stippling effect too the illustration style is awesome yes yeah. i like this a lot it feels very mm-hmm. um titus uh oh my yes. why can't i think of his name uh smith? yes Titus smith yes yeah, yeah. yes yeah, very much um like love that but it actually has an old comic dennis the menace style mm-hmm. kind of cool yes I, I'm, 100%. I'm digging it i'm into it um so anyway that's a brand a rebrand that just happened if you've ever watched the show we always talk about the rebrands that are happening that week give our opinions on them um, I think that one's good. One that I don't think uh, necessarily needed to happen. Infinity. I, we don't need this. One. Okay, here's yeah. the thing. Okay. When we talk on the show, I try not to rag on people because I'm like, mm. everybody, everybody's got a hot take in design. Uh, to this one, I'm like, I think I'd, I'd want to know more information about why we rebranded here. I do here. know why. Um, yes. Please tell me. This is uh, following in the footsteps of what VW did a few years ago. Okay. As and GM did as well. As these companies are completely shifting to electronic vehicles, they are efficientizing in some way, lightening and streamlining their branding to a company that old one was around for quite a while. They've had uh, you can click on the link and show they had a they have quite a history. Even though they've stayed very similar, they've made these small little tweaks but this is the first time they've really revamped it you can see it's much more streamlined it's a more it feels more efficient and then the road has this new kind of like uh it doesn't end in the point it almost feels more infinity whereas the old one has a point meaning there's then there's the ending yeah now because it va- has that vacant little space in there it almost feels like it does go on and there's a really cool close-up of their new grill and you'll see how um that is in there i just think again there you go you can see uh, how it's three-dimensional cool. and it's yeah. kind of neat you that's, know that's um that's pretty cool I, I did i did comment on this because i thought uh here's a here's a brand that they are looking towards the future which i think is great but they don't really have an offering right now in this world and yet they've rebranded to kind of keep the company alive and you know it's interesting. Yep. I don't know. And uh, yeah. the thing that I'm noticing actually the most is the mm-hmm. color change, right? The color shift. We talked oh, about yes. this on, I think, last week. 
is black don't is ever totally make anything different. yeah just full black and white they did this super deep blue and it gives it yeah. so much more energy and it feels again cleaner it feels more luxury it feels fancier and especially with this like mm -hmm. if this was on black it would look a little scary here it looks like so luxe and delicious like, ooh, there's a horizon at the end like there's, yes. a, there's a bright light at the end of the tunnel look yes at that. <laughs> i think this is a really really good one um mm -hmm. also want to call out some comments from sophia jones every brand's logo is just becoming more and more tech like even brands that have nothing to do with tech. Um, I kind of, I, I can feel that. I think that there is a yeah. modernity that people are but chasing. Everyone is a tech, everyone's slightly becoming a tech one. Yes. Stop talking about Infinity because this one's my favorite. <laughs> Nick like saw it and he's like, moving on. Oh uh, my God. This is right. my favorite just brand in general over the last few months. This one by Reform Collective. Uh, you can scroll down and see this new, you might've seen this new logo for uh, Runway. Runway. I love everything about the logo, the boarding pass, the 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 graphics, the movement look. Oh gosh, I love this. It's really good. That's transportation done at its best. It's really, right? really good. I, I love anything aviation, flight, Ooh. travel. Come on, this is, oh. I would. I don't even know where they are or how to use them, or if it's in my future in some way. But I will travel on runway one day. <laughs> yes, this is really good. And again, it's all about. Uh, I think like this kind of stuff of showing photography. This doesn't mm -hmm. really have anything to do with their business, but it's helping to like sell the story and kind of build the message and yes. build the brand. So if you're mm -hmm. ever on uh, working on a brand, it's not just about the logos and not just about slapping it on things. It's about building context around how the brand looks, feels, communicates, all of those things. Yes, and I love that, again, another word mark, right? You could probably use the A, I think they used it on the swag bag and a few other things solo as like a icon, but the word mark is really having a comeback. Yes. It's, especially in this digital age, I'm kind of surprised we all went to that because of screen size, right? Yep. But this one, I mean, we kind of set the, I think they copied us a little bit though. Remember with office hours and our anchor points and we chose that font that had the arrow Instead oh yeah, that's the, true. Come on, guys. They come on. They they checked out Andrew and Nick. You know? <laughs> uh Yeah. All right. So let's keep going here um, and talk a little bit more about branding. We're going to talk about self branding and then we're going to get into our brand smash. Uh, but yeah. let's talk about: Is it important to have your own brand? Chat. We need you to sound off on Please. this um, in a really fun segment that we like to call trendworthy. <laughs> uh, yeah, we can go there. Yeah, we do it. See, we make them, we make them flexible. <laughs> just know, I had my hand on all the buttons, just waiting to see where Nick wanted to put this next section because I wasn't really like, sure where we wanted to land. Yeah, I was like, it could have been, it could have been DIY. We could have done spotlight. We could have done a bunch of things. So this is trendworthy, and let's talk about having your own brand. Nick, yeah. what opinions do you have on this? Uh, these are some of the things I pulled from my most recent talk that was about giving students this idea if you're going to do the self-branding keep these in mind i love the first quote here your life is limited so don't waste it living someone else's life strive for originality there's too much copycat there's too much yes. i love that person's logo let me try to incorporate that in there yes it, it I, works for them for a reason yeah i say that right? this is so mean i say that yeah. at every wedding that i go to i hate yeah. weddings because i've been to so many and every time i'm like someone has lived your life before like someone has had this yeah. before and i'm so tired of just doing the same thing it's limited right you don't want to be living someone else's or something else that someone else has done do something interesting and i love these yeah. points authentic con confident and memorable what does that mean nick no uh authentic it means it's you confident means it shows your expertise even maybe if you're too young and you don't feel you have it here's the first impression to make the confident thing stand out and memorable you want people to memorize this and go like oh i remember back who has that logo with the arrow and the blah or whatever it might be that is how you will be remembered and if they need you later in in life they got you because they're going to remember you yep right and we're doing less and is that, more now yeah, uh totally. less less is more is the thing that's what we just talked about how yeah. like everything is looking so modern it's because less is more like we're really pushing to minimize and not really minimize but like efficientize efficient yes uh, say more with less yes my, exactly my yeah that mind. trying yeah. to communicate because attention spans are shorter we need to get to the point faster i think that was reflected in branding of things looking simpler looking more modern mm. Yeah, and there's so many good examples out there. I, I just found 
three really, actually four really good ones. And I showed these to my students because we all know, like, you know, when you see two, someone take two letters and put them together and they think they've got a logo. To me, a lot of times that screams, maybe you're just starting or you've just graduated. If you can get the confidence as much as these people have, I love the RB one. That's an, she's an illustrator. She wanted to have a little touch of that idea. Like, Hey, I'm graphic design and I'm strong and I've got this confident, memorable thing, but I've got this little flourish of a flower just to show off the illustration skills. Right. Yep. Um, Tom is a great one too. If you do hand lettering, let that be known. That's how you're going to memorize and remember these people. Yep. And if you want to learn more about hand lettering, hold on, let me cut back to the close up. If you want to learn more about hand lettering, you can tune in next week at 10 a.m. every single day Pacific time for a branding workshop with Bob Ewing. Um, one of the best of the best when it comes to lettering. He's going to be showing you how to use pen tool, how to do lettering, how to build a brand, how to make badges. So 10 a.m. set your calendars. You also can set reminders here on Adobe live it is going totally. to be an amazing boot camp all week Thanks, monday through thursday at 10 a.m pacific time right here on adobe live all right perfect gotta so get that ad in there let's, let's look at some let's bad see, ones. yes let's see the bat now these are Screaming. what i typically see students do and again doesn't show off the confidence it's not too memorable because some of these are you know almost identical in in some way shape or form right legibility readability um weird fonts that aren't in kind of that just did, haven't stood the test of time right what what do you see as the weak points here i'm so bored um yeah. I, like <laughs> anytime i see work like this i'll like and i'll say it to the person I'm like can i get your feedback i'm like i'm bored uh i've just seen these like you've seen these a million times right that it's uh lettering with some element um it's trying to be it's both trying to be too many things and not being enough things at the yeah. same time uh yeah and i think it, it, yeah, it, it just is a lot. I think the idea of self-branding to an aesthetic is not a good idea. I think if you self-brand, yeah. you need to kind of narrate your own story. And it feels like all these stories that I'm looking at have been told before. And so I have a preconceived idea of what they are. Um, and that's not great. If you're building your own brand, you want to be able to control the narrative. Also, sorry to all these people if you come along I, I'm the very stream. sorry, too. I, you, you, you've you been in my my pitch deck for my classroom we're, notes for quite a while. We're here to help you. If you, would like, if you would like a private consultation, mm -hmm. Nick and I are available to help your but personal branding look a little better. One thing I want to say about this, too, it also tells me about what you are using as reference, where what your taste is in design. Are you aware of what's working right now and what's fresh and what's new and, and what's expressive. Yep. This tells me you're looking at the same things over and over again. Yes. You know, and Mimi is saying too busy and most are not quickly identifiable at a small size. Scale, Ooh, that's a really good point. If I zoom this out, like yeah. well, literally none of these are identifiable. Maybe mm -hmm. this one, uh, yeah. but not really. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? That's wild. All right. So continue around. Let's talk about, Nick, let's talk about our self branding. This is going to be so it. fun. What's your deal with your self branding? I I got this idea by collecting a ton of really good influence and stuff that I love. Notice I got a lot of stuff in either car and and like railroad design. I love old emblems from like what uh, car companies and things like that. Always love. I think the Emmy Award is one of like the most beautiful things I've ever seen. Right. Yep. Something about this. My words were energizing. Uh, what else did I have there? Streamlined high octane, fearless and targeted and valiant. I love these. These were the things, these were my describing kind of personality traits that I wanted my logo to have. And when I put it together, I, I tried to do again, say the most, all of that with the least with one mark, yes. one mark that could tell all those it's targeted, it's efficient, it's moving. And it also just became my O in the name and it could be my icon mark that I can use anywhere else. Even the colors came from some of these things that I pulled from. That's what we talked about that last week, how important it is to pull colors from the the reference and the things that you find that inspired you in the first place, right? Yep. And yeah. someone is saying, I love Nick's logo type. Yes, it's gorgeous. Um, Thank you. So let's take a look at my personal brand because I think that Nick and I have very, very different approaches to personal branding. But um, same formula. Same formula. Yep. So mm -hmm. I, whenever I'm working on a project, if someone comes to me and asks for feedback, I always ask, what's the thing? I'm like, what's the thing? What's the one thing? What like, what's the thing about it? Um, mm -hmm. And so when I was working on my personal branding, I wanted it to just be a thing. Like I wanted the whole thing to be a thing. And so all of my personal branding is literally this. I, I use almost always black and white because to me, I want the content that I create and the stories that I create, 
are not really cohesive, right? There isn't a lot of overlap in my work. I like to like craft a specific story for a specific thing at a specific time. And so when I was working on a personal brand, I wanted it to be something that I could just slap onto different places and kind of put wherever. Um, <clears throat> I have used this element here as a bunch of different uses. And that's what I'm talking about having a thing. This yeah. is the thing to me. And so my business cards, which are not around me. I figured there'd be one here. <laughs> uh, my business cards have this die cut out so that I can uh, put stuff in there. The idea was that you could hold out your phone and I could do like secret messages in there. Um, and then also I've used this as a container for different things. So let me actually pull up my uh, Instagram real quick and I'll show you guys how I use that container for things. Uh, and again, I like to do you, big campaigns of just yeah. random stuff. And so having a very set personal brand is not helpful to me. Um, you went all MTV with your logo. I, I went mean, very like MTV with my logo. Having a, fill a, a fillable space that allows for adaptability, anything spontaneous that you want to say in there. Yes. So this is a great example that I want that logo to just be the thing, right? Mm -hmm. Pops in and then you'll see I use this a whole lot to do the Southwest colors, and then they zoom out and become part of that. And I've used it to do pride stuff. I've used it to do loading screens. I've used it to like bounce in. And so it's kind of just the vehicle in which I create my personal brand is this little space. And that's my whole personal brand. Dare I um, say too, you've got a very long name, right? And I do. A, a lot, and you always are really good in explaining how to pronounce your last name. I think this does all of that at the handshake by just giving us hawk.co. Yep, and I wanted something that encompassed right. kind of like, sometimes my work is very gritty and serious. And so I wanted something that I could just slap on in like high texture and ripped in crazy, but something that yeah. still has that energy, right? And that's why I add that little exclamation mark because my site and business is called hawk.co. And so I put this in here. So it's like, it's not part of the word, but I want you to feel excited. I want like a little little bit of ha ha on there. Um, no. And someone's saying hawk using his nickname as his brand is such a great move, so catchy and memorable. Yes, I can't believe I got it at one point I owned ho.ch, um, like I just owned Hawk. And then the Swiss government said, you can't have a two name uh, domain and we're gonna take that from you. And I said, okay, wow. bye. <laughs> You had ho.ch. I had ho.ch, and I think it was is Switzerland. That, is that China? Uh, I, oh, it might it might have been China. I don't know. Well, whoever it was, Ooh. I got a notification that it's like two letters are only for wow. governments, and we don't know and how I'm you sorry, got this. Sorry, dude. So we're you, it. I know you got it, but we're getting we're taking it back. <laughs> Whatever. I like Hawk.co a lot. Um, all right, so let's talk about unconventional yeah. branding, and I have a couple great examples here. Um, and Nick, I actually think, hold on, let's cut here. I think this is a great opportunity to do a segment transition into something that we like to call. Back, in, Back the day. in the day. <laughs> chat, look at you just hanging out there. Um, <laughs> chat, <laughs> chat made it through the transition. Uh, all it. right, so this is something called Verisacrum. And Verisacrum was happening in the very late 1800s, early 1900s. And this was a magazine that was uh, created during a period of time and by a group. This was kind of in between a movement called Distigil. Um, which was very like structured. Uh, and then this was by, um, I believe that like their name was like The Four and it was happening in Glasgow, I believe. I'm doing all this from memory, uh, but it was happening in somewhere in Germany and I think Glasgow. And there were these people named The Four and they were friends that ended up getting married. It was like a weird situation, but they created a magazine and the magazine was very much influenced by this style, right? That it was a lot of, um, structure. It was a lot of custom lettering. And this was one of the first places that their branding was that they didn't allow advertisers to take out ads in their magazine. They could have advertisers approach them and they would create the ads for that magazine. Right. And so it was stuff that they would break other people's brands to stay on brand with their brand, which I think is so interesting. Um, and that doesn't happen a lot anymore, no. but here is the equivalent of what Verisacrum was. So this is, again, we're looking at 1898 for this issue. So late <laughs> 1800s, we zoom all the way forward to modern day and that same exact idea of you can't add uh, air ads on our network. We create ads for you. What brand is this? Nick, do you, are you familiar? Could you guess what this brand is looking just at this slide? Oh, good question. No. Um, Lost Movies. This is, you might be a little out of the demographic for not, this one. 
not blockbuster yes chat blockbuster. chat let us know if you realize and recognize what this is but this is a brand that basically is a sub brand of another brand and mm -hmm. they have very much taken control of their brand they have ta told other people or they have created ads for other people they have just been on TV and done their own shows. And they're like, I don't know, we're just going to air this for 15 minutes and just throw it on. Right. And so Nick, the great reveal of the modern day of Verisacrum is Adult Swim. Um, ah, there you go. If you ever have watched Adult Swim or you grew up with Adult Swim, to me, this is like the ultimate example of a brand. Like Adult Swim needs absolutely nothing. And you know that it's Adult Swim. I think it's insane how they've built this brand. Um, and recently came back as a trend on TikTok. Uh, and so you may have seen every time that they did something, it was different. Their brand was kind of just like, I don't know, like our name in parentheses. And they would throw it in like rainbows and like everything was just pure yeah. chaos. And that was the brand. And so it came back on TikTok recently that people would be doing random stuff and then put the AS on there for the adult swim. And it was like the big reveal. Uh, and Perfect. it just shows how strong that brand is that they don't need a brand. They just have built the brand is the aesthetic and the vibe in their shows and how they present them present themselves. It's almost a placeholder. So it's almost like a placeholder, a placeholder for whatever they want to do. Yes. Yeah, and I love that. I like to talk about this awesome. uh, when I do talks at conferences and stuff is you're creating the coat hanger for other people's experiences, mm -hmm. not creating the experience. Right. There and so go. this is very much that they've created this coat hanger. And they're like, hey, whatever your code is, come hang it out. Whatever you want. Whatever you do, what, do whatever <laughs> yeah. you want. And that's that's what the brand is. And so I think this is just like such a great example. Um, yeah. All right, let's talk about blending in. This is maybe a bad idea, right? Of yeah. branding. And unfortunately, a very kind of like hip thing right now. It is. And I've talked to a lot of the buyers at some of the biggest stores across the country, and they are seeing this, and some of them. Are, it's actually attracting them to a new brand because they're like, oh, it fits in with everything else I buy. And they buy in this kind of weird, you know, uh, zone where it's like everything kind of meshes together. So maybe there is a benefit to the fact that all these brands look like they came from, in a quick glance, maybe the same company in a lot of ways. They look like they're all the same agency same for sure. <laughs> you know, so my question to most of us is, what do you guys think? I mean, like I have had clients come to me and say, I love that Diana's and let's I want to just copy them. And you're like, of course you cannot, particularly if you're in the same industry, right? But now I'm seeing the same look happen in other industries. So if you're creating a juice line and it has nothing to do with frozen ice cream treats, do you still want to blend in or do you want to, you know, kind of start your own conversation? I, get, I think, again, it's like sometimes it might work, but I, I'm not a fan of this in any way. You know, no, just I'm worth bored. showing it because it's like, come on, guys, we we there's endless possibilities to every creative, you know, project ahead of you. Yeah, it and feels like everyone's arguing with the same answer. And you're like, you're you right. guys are all agreed. Why are we yelling at each other? Like, <laughs> yeah, exactly, like if you're going right? to argue, like make something different, like prove mm -hmm. a point. And to hear it's just like everyone's trying to prove the same point. And it's like, yeah, we got it. Like, there's nothing interesting. Um I do think that I actually like really like this style, but I do think that like when you see it all together, yeah, the kind of like everyone doing the same thing feels like we're all just like yelling into a crowded room. Yeah. Do you do you feel sometimes too when you see this? Does dare I say this? It feels a little lazy on the design part. Eh, yeah. Yeah. Sometimes it works. Don't get me wrong. I, I, this works for me sometimes. I think they're they're with the exception of the two juices. It's very clear what everything is here. Yes. Like those juices, I think, get really tough to read, particularly written vertically and in that font. Uh -huh. But everything else, a dirt bag is hilarious. Now, if I you see that bag. amongst, if you see that amongst all the other protein bars, let's say, yeah, that one's going to stand out in that industry. Yep. Not a lot of people do that. So, yeah. it it has some pros and cons. I agree. You know? Um. All right. So let's let's do this. I think that is Nick just got like, he's getting situated. He's getting ready. All right, everybody fire up your illustrators. Uh, we do have a place for you to post your brand slams. And that is down here, discord.gg slash ACC. Um, and over there, you will see that we do have a homework channel. So this is going to be your homework this week is to try to do a brand slam, slam two different brands together and create something new and kind of reimagine them to see what you can come up with. Right. And so over here is going to be my screen. This is going to be Nick's screen. Uh, and I believe, uh, so the difference between the two screens, let's do that real quick. Uh, first oh, screen, should I put my name on it? 
Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, put your name on it. Yeah. But uh, basically, the difference is going to be Nick's screen has the dark background. My screen has the light background. Ah, uh, there we uh, go. And I'll go back and forth between the two uh, just so that you guys can see that. But first of all, we are doing Sprite in the style of Snapple. So yeah. we'll be taking Sprite and trying to make it Snapple. And Nick, for fun. What, yeah, what do you. Do we want to try? Do you want me to do the opposite? <gasps> Ooh. That's fun. So Whoa. you do Sprite to Snapple, yeah. and I'll do yeah. Snapple to Sprite. Okay, I love that. That's a that's a great idea. Okay, cool. And, and to, to those two points, well, uh, you come up with two words that describe Sprite, and I'll do two words that describe Snapple. Okay, fun. Okay. So, what do you think? Um, I think that so I'm thinking of Sprite? Sprite. So yours should be your Snapple should be come up with two adjectives. Okay. Then, so yeah. I'm gonna put Snapple big on mine because I'm doing Snapple in yeah. the style of Sprite, right? Yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, so I think Snapple is relaxed. And I think Snapple is, um, let me look at the, I actually pulled it up here so we can see. I yeah. think Snapple is fresh and uh, Snapple is sassy. I think fresh I think and crisp. sassy. I think it's crisp. Oh yeah, crisp. Crisp is a good crisp. one. Love that word. Yes. Okay. So this is the brand for Snapple right now. So I will be turning this into the Sprite brand, which we actually have right here. So Sprite yeah. under uh, underwent a rebrand. Very um, incredible. Less is more. Super yes. incredible. Everything we talked about. Drip, drip, drip. Let's go. Yes, this is awesome. So Amazing. what I'm going to be doing is I'm actually going to be pulling stuff from this case study just to play around with, to get colors, to kind of get inspiration, and then start building this out. Nick, where are you starting? So if I'm going to take Sprite and turn it into Snapple, Right, Sprite in the style stuff. I'm looking for those crisp, fresh, lowercase only fonts that are gonna kind of work. Cause I know what I'm gonna kind of do to it. Oh gosh, that looks incredible. Look at that one. But I do want, ooh. <laughs> Nick's I'm, so I'm, excited. I'm finding, I'm like, I, you know when you like go through your fonts and you're like, when did I get that one? Yeah, you're like, why are these this. so good? So I'm trying to find that like kind of elementary, friend, very friendly, very crisp, you know, kind of like even like, I think it could even, I'm not gonna, we're not gonna copy it guys. We're not gonna just say, take Sprite and make it Snapple or vice versa, but we just wanna be influenced by them, right? That is that what you're thinking? Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a bit. I'm gonna do a bit of a, I'm gonna be, I'm a gonna try card. to shift it to make it, yeah, yeah, to make it, if the yeah. Sprite brand was Snapple, right? And so this is, Sorry, if Snapple was in the Sprite, the Sprite. brand. Yes. Uh, and so it really is understanding the details of yes. like, what are the brands? And so for me, I'm looking at like the explosionness and mm -hmm. the sharpness of Sprite, right? All the type is, yeah. you know, so sharp. This white, green, yellow kind of uh, mm -hmm. color palette I'm going to be playing with. And then I'm going to play a bit with some type. Uh, but then I also want to incorporate some of these iconic Snapple things like the Snapple logo, that shape I think is really iconic. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm starting with that shape and I'm going to try to mirror what's happening with this. I think that this is a really mm. iconic part of the new brand. And so I want to see if I can get, what did I just do? What in the world? Hold on. Chat. I yeah. tried to pay something and it like exploded into the wrong Cut. window. Oh, did it go? Is the scale too big? Oh, it might be too big. That's fine. I, um, yeah. So I'm basically trying to get this. <laughs> Rest in peace. Okay, there we go. You try to put him like a little fusion between the two? Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna do a little fusion between the two. So as I do that, uh, Nick, I know you're working on type and uh, real quick, I just wanna show you a tool that y'all might not know exists or might not have used. I'm just gonna grab this green right now. Mm -hmm. um, but this tool is called, I believe the blob tool. And I'm actually gonna have a hard time finding it because I never use it. So I'm gonna come down here. If you don't know, you can click on these three little dots and it will show you every tool that is available to you. So if you know the icon, which I know right here, I want crystallize tool. And so it is hidden underneath the width tool. So if you ever wanna find a tool, they're all right here if you click on those little three dots. So I'm going to do the crystallize tool. It's right under here. There we go. Crystallize. I think that's what I want. And then from here, I think I can change my settings by hitting enter. So the crystallize tool intensity, I'm going to do a little less. Uh, we're going to do maybe like 20% complexity. Yes. One 
down one. I want it really subtle. So when I click, you'll see that it's actually gonna give me those really cool explosions. And so I can kind of play around. I'm just clicking and holding and I can Love play that. around with the idea of that. And maybe I do want the complexity to go up a little bit and maybe this goes back to 50. So let's see here. Yeah. There you go. There we go. That's and so we can start to kind of pop out these edges. And again, this is where I'm trying to get that idea of Sprite, that kind of explosion into that Snapple look by using this tool. Very cool. Right? Love it, dude. All right, cool. Nick, what are you doing over here? All right, so I found a font that I, I kind of do like. I like this bottom one. To me, I feel like it has all of those little elements, but I like that it has a, a bit of a retro vibe to what Snapple's current font was. And I like this vibe here. This is called uh, Arabara. Love that. So quickly, I'm going to make a duplicate of it because I do want to outline this immediately. So we're going to just get this guy. Whoops. Come on now. There we go. Get him over here. So I'm going to outline it. Command Shift O. Let's zoom in and see if there's anything we could do for fun. I do want to maybe drop the eye a little bit here because I'm going to do that circle a little bit. So I want something a little bit here to have some fun. And then instead of this guy, I think this might give me a chance to do something similar to what we liked about the spark that you were just messing around with. If you go to um, effect and you go to distort, you've got punk, pucker and bloat. So yes. here we got something kind of, kind of cool here. I think if I just mess around here and give myself something that feels oh. a little bit similar to that for like, I'm bringing in an element of Sprite in there Yep. here. And then let's make it a little bit smaller. That looks cool. Let's I need, I need, I need to do that. That's funny. And I, I love, this is why I love working with people, uh, is when you said that, when you're like, oh yeah, you could use the pucker and blow. I was like, oh, I should be using that for like the edges of mine. Uh, cause pucker and blow just does a better job and it's more precise yeah. than the crystallize. And then this T it did feel a little bit tall to begin with. If I drop it down, it gives me a little bit more room to drop that in there. And if I want, I mean, like this could even be, so I've got to remember that that circular kind of border that this has, maybe the T, if I drop this down, is the beginning of that, of that circle that goes around the entire thing. Yep. That might be pretty cool. All right, I'm so gonna, I'm gonna mess with that. I'm playing around some more with this kind of Snapple shape, right, that we had here that I think was really good. And I have taken that shape and then I did the pucker and bloat to it right here. And what I'm gonna do is I wanna bring back some of that softness because I think part of the Snapple uh, is a little bit of that soft. I don't wanna go too hard on the like intensity of uh, Sprite. And so I'm yeah. just going to expand this here and then we're gonna go to effect and I'm going to go to stylize and then round out the corners a little bit. And that's gonna okay. give me a nice little, ah, it's too blobby. All right, we're experimenting. Uh, and Nick, yeah, yeah. let's talk about this as we keep working mm -hmm. here. We talked about our different approaches to branding. What yeah. is your approach when you're like starting to work on a brand? Well, first thing I'm doing obviously is we're, we're skipping a lot of the discovery and the research and everything else that we would typically do. I would be in a, in a position where I've got a mood board and some initial comps kind of okayed by the client, then it's me go doing right in there from sketch work into Illustrator and having some fun. I like to fill an entire artboard up, make it the most messy playground of a, the beginnings of the brand. And the client never sees this. Like if you, if you, if you have that one file that you know is just yours and the client never sees it, it gives you the chance to experiment, have some fun, make a ton of mistakes as well, try out different fonts and different colors. And that way you just duplicate a whole row and you mess around with those. You play with edit color. There's so many different ways you can do that, right? Yep. What about you? Um, I throw all of the bad stuff until mm -hmm. I get a good stuff. Gotcha. <laughs> That's, that is 100% just how I work is yeah. I, I basically am like, it's going to be bad until it gets good. Uh, and I go. don't really have a better way to describe my process, but I kind of have ideas and I'm like, does the concept of this idea work? If the concept works for me, then I keep making it bad until the concept matches with the application. Uh, exactly. cause I very much would rather explore the concept and not explore the application yeah. all the time. Yeah. I'm going to do something really cool here. If you're doing the outside border 
and you want something uniform, I'm thinking of the, the Snapple logo itself, right? Where you've got this really cool outside border that's really in the right shape and everything. What I typically do as a quick little tool is I'll draw a box around exactly what I want this to have, right? This is kind of my space. And what you do is you just go to object and you're gonna go to path and offset path. And what I'm gonna do is go like 0.7 too much. And what's cool is if you just keep pressing tab, what you get is the, the preview of it without getting out of the dialog box. So as I change this, you just hit tab and it'll give you that preview. Once that's clicked, I'm gonna hit okay. I can get rid of this one that's on the inside. Now I could take this one and we can kind of mess with the radius and find that perfect spot where we feel like it works. And now we know this is exactly all around the exact same feeling of the uh, Sprite logo type and word type all on its own. Yep. Kind of fun to play around with that way. So what I'm doing is I know that uh, this element that they had on Sprite, which I really, really liked, uh, was this kind of like refraction of the logo or the like kind mm -hmm. of water over the logo. So I want to see if I can do this um, in Photoshop with this kind of snappily piece that I've created here. Uh, yeah. And I'm actually going to try to do it with some of the fruit elements that they have. And so I'm looking on Adobe stock. Uh, you can just go to stock.adobe.com slash free uh, and see what you can find. And I'm just going to try to play in Photoshop to see if I can get some of the more like fruit elements in. Mm -hmm. um, actually, this one's going to be way better. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do a displacement map. And displacement maps are really fun uh, and super helpful to make things look just a little bit different. So let me move this over here real quick. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to bring this black and white into Photoshop. Hello. And from here, we are going to just scale this up so it fits our whole artboard. All right, that looks pretty good to me actually, but I'm going to crush these down so that it's very, very black and white. Uh, I want it to be high contrast. Something like that I think is probably good. And I'm gonna hit okay. Now I'm gonna save this as a displacement map. So I'm just going to save it on my computer as displacement. Go here and then hit save. Save that as a PSD. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab a couple of these elements from Snapple. And again, we're trying to take the Snapple brand and make it Sprite. And so I'm actually not going to keep the, I'm going to keep this blue because I really like it uh, from what's happening in Snapple. And y'all, this is the wrong way to do things. <laughs> I am literally going to quick little screenshot and then drop that into Photoshop Bro, to grab the hex color. I'm sorry. That is the perfect thing to do. I, it's right. <laughs> it, I am guilty. Hey, you're just in concept stage. Come it on. Is, it is the right answer. Um, you know, it's going to be right. Yeah. Love it. There's, there's nothing That's wrong with good. that. Uh, all right, great. cool. So I've sampled that color. It looks good. And I'm just going to fill the whole background, oops, with that color. And then we are going to toss this underneath that water and then change the water mode to maybe screen. I'm not mad about that. Uh, what I can do here as well is I can crush these levels but make it so that it only hits this one. And so now when I change the color mode to screen, right, it's gonna be a lot lighter, which I think is what I want and I am going to try to bring back some of that blue. There we go. Blue, love that. Yeah. Feeling nice and cold, refreshing. Cold and refreshing. Everybody wants an ice cold Snapple. Everybody wants an ice cold okay. Snapple. Dang it, freaking Nick. Just know that I can see Nick's screen the whole time. And so as I'm working, if you've ever been like self-conscious about your work, just like <laughs> be working on something that looks that terrible while watching someone else do something that's amazing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab some of these brand elements that I see here uh, that are core to Snapple and kind of drop them in here. And oh no, look at it, there's a black background, who cares? Hit remove background and it'll fix it. Three, two, one, and ba 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 ba. Very cool. So easy. So I'm gonna put these around and then I'm gonna show you what a displacement map does if you're not familiar with it. Oops. This is the funnest way, if you do have to do something quick for a brand that exists, the way you're pulling stuff right off of a website, like, you know this is just concept, like, how neat that you can get actual things to play off of that. Their yes. website's really nice. Too, so easy. Their website's really nice. Yeah. Uh, so I I'm going to kind of snap one probably 15 years. 
Yes, I'm gonna drop these wow. in here and let's do this. And Howard says he does that all the time. Yes, thank you, Howard. So we've got some of our elements here and I'm actually gonna make them bigger. And again, you're like, Andrew, the resolution's not gonna be great. I don't care, it's just ideas. Um, especially when you're concepting, don't worry mm -hmm. about that stuff. Like Ooh, don't- Pop a little drop, a little drop on that. Right. Drop a little drop. All right, so let's see what happens. What I wanna do is I'm going to group all these together and then I'm going to duplicate it just to have a duplication. And I'm gonna make this into a smart object. Now that I have the smart object selected, I'm going to go to image. I'm going to go to, no, I'm gonna to go to filter. I'm going to go to distort, and then I'm going to mm -hmm. go to displace. And here it's going to bring up this panel and you can play around with these settings to find what's perfect for you, but I'll hit okay. And then I'll go to that displacement maps and hit open and watch what happens. It is going to shift all of my pieces by however much uh, they're kind of on the background being moved. And if that makes, man, it's so hard to describe. If it is darker, then it moves further. If it is light, lighter, then it doesn't. Someone's saying click and drag with the eyedropper tool. Hold on. A whole new effect. Wait, if this, that, if this, if this works, I'm gonna lose my mind. Okay, so we have the eyedropper tool. Where's the eyedropper tool? Yeah. Um, uh, up, up, up. There you go. There you go. Yeah. All right. So click. Got it. So you click and drag. Oh, it's just. Oh wait, hold on. Can I drag out of? No, I can't drag out. No. <laughs> no, you're you're fired. Um, okay, so I've got these here, and I probably want to bring them below this water layer. And what's cool is, there we go. Now they look like they're in like an icy cooler, mm. um, and you can see that it's Ooh, kind of refracting awesome. those. It's a little too on the nose for me, so I'm actually going to take the opacity down. And now we've got this kind of underwater effect. Uh, and if I wanted to, I could actually undo this. Let's undo this real quick, and I'm going to take my settings down so it isn't as crispy. Uh, and it's going to be a little more of a subtle displacement. So convert to smart object, filter, distort, displace. And I'm going to change these to like five and hit OK. Grab my displacement map. And now there we go. It's just a little bit less. And I'm going to drop that below this layer and we'll put it at like an 80%. There you go. Nice Let go of the click on the too. color you want. Oh, yes. OK, yes. All right, Nick, let's go back to your screen because you actually are making progress. <laughs> I have duplicated before I make any changes. I, I'm a big fan of just doing a, a shift drag duplication, having a new one so you don't spoil anything. This is still just a line around there. It's not a shape, okay? So the final tuning is I'm gonna bring the P up to that. Now, if you look here, technically what I have is just a line. So I'm gonna take this and going to expand it. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna give me the actual shape that I wanted but I have it now in this form. So what I've got to do is cut through a few things here and I think it's gonna look great. First thing I'm gonna do is the P. You're gonna go here, go back to offset path again, and I'm gonna be probably quite big there. So I'm gonna go point 0.1, hit tab. That's not enough. So see what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get an actual area here that I'm gonna cut out from the line. So let's try point 0.2. That looks a lot better. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to Y so you can see this. There's that. If I send this to the back, and I take that plus this, we go to our old friend Pathfinder, and I'm gonna just do minus back. And you notice what that does is it does the perfect curvature right here, all equal, all uniform when it comes to that. The only other thing I gotta do now is this one here. So the best thing about path and offset path is it keeps that last one you had. So if I go here, notice, see what it's done? It's made an offset of exactly the burst we have. We're gonna click this, send it to back, and from here again, we do minus back. We get that perfect little thing there, looking really good. And now the only thing I gotta do is for the T, but I wanna make that connect here. So what I will do, what would you do? I'm gonna, this is a combination of both. I think I'm gonna do minus back and then maybe a little bit of divide in there to work, make that work. Yes, so, uh, sure. Right. Nick, just know <laughs> that when you start talking, when you have a really good design and you start talking mm -hmm. and then you ask me a question, when you start going through your process, I just check out because I'm like, man, this is really great information for our audience to know, but I need to step my game up so I'm not paying attention to what you're saying. So okay. I have no clue what question you just Here's asked me, but the answer is yes. Okay, so I've got all this stuff going here. I hope this works. I'm going to grab all of it okay. here. Then I'm going to go to divide. And what this is going to do is allow me to piece by piece take away things I'm going to do a few ungroups. Oh, use the Shape Builder tool, Nick. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah, you should, Shape Builder Here. would be way easier and you'd get much many, 
much, you get less shapes. You get less extra shapes. There we go. Oh, so these combined, I see. So because this was combined down there, oh, I see. So I've got to do this. Let's go here. And for this one, I'm going to break it right there with the cutting tool and right there. Yeah, the shape builder is, I I always find that you you use the one you know the most. Yes. And I think I, for some reason, I know that one a little bit better. There we go. Okay, so I think this works. Get here, get rid of this guy. Now, this one here, I want to connect. So all I have to do, I have two endpoints, so I'm gonna connect that to that. And then just slide this one over. And it looks like they're almost in tune. So I got to get this guy down a little bit more, grab these two pinpoints, get it down to there. And then this one looks like it needs to go a little bit higher and we should be good to go. I can obviously refine that a little bit later, but let's see how it looks. Okay. The T's a little funky. I'm not, I'm not too happy with that, but I have something that I can kind of start digging. I think it just needs more of a curve all the way around. Yep. Right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm so work on that. over here, I'm working on this. I don't love this. Um, and I actually just got a different idea that I'm going to try to adapt a little bit. Uh, but what I do like is this kind of thing. So I've got some elements in here. We're starting to stack. We're starting to get some of that water drop on it. So this is going okay. I don't love it, but we are heading in a direction. And again, uh, there we go. Color Dodge is actually way better here to get that kind of like dewy look. Um, I think I have one more idea that's going to be a little more of just a um, a play on this. And what I do like mm -hmm. about Sprite is it, it has that lean to it. So what I'm going to do is I found this font and the font is belly. Um, and I am going to do Snapple here. And what I want to do is I'm going to give it just a lean. And the way to give it a lean is you come in here and you can go to Shear, which is right underneath the Scale tool. And we're just going to Shear it a little bit. A little bit of sheer and then i th sheer. think i'm going to bring it in so it's a little bit tighter i'm going to bring the tracking in there we go that's getting a little more energetic what i'm trying to do is capture the energy of what's happening here uh and some of these letters are looking weird but i can use the touch type tool to come in here and just fix the kerning on that all right that looks pretty okay and this sprite logo see what elements uh, it has this little like swoop in with the eye. And so what I think I want to do is find somewhere to put that as well. Uh, and what I might do here is bring this all the way across. So it becomes like a much sharper kind of hit. And that's what I'm gonna play around with is try to get a nice little sharpness on some of these that has some extra, just something a little extra, right? So giving it this, and finding little areas where I can pull that out. And I think that this could be interesting, right? That I pull this out here and then maybe these get a, um, I'm just gonna ungroup this to see what this looks like. I get a stroke on it to get some of that little cut out element. That's probably too much, but I'm not mad about that. Mm, I'm mad about it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm mad about it. <laughs> Uh, let's see, where else? I like that. Chat, do you have any other ideas of where I can get some momentum flowing for this? Because I want it to really fly on this left and right, but I do feel like the L is the only place I can do that. And maybe it comes all the way across. Ooh. That's not bad. Yeah. That's not bad. So what I'm going to do here... Well, just feeling really like 1950s version of Snapple in a way. Yes. So Kinda I'm going to add an anchor point here, line. and this is a nice little hack... If, so I want to make sure that I'm following the kind of curve of the S, but right now it's feeling a little bit too thick. So what I can do is I, I usually like to just round out one of these. Oh man, it needs to be sharp though. All right, so let's try to hit it so that it is coming down at this angle and then it's coming through at this angle. And Nick, do you ever do this with your type? Um, is find different oh, yes. angles to hit. Oh, yeah, because if you're going to make a cut, you might as well pull from something that's already there, right? Yes. I love that. Yes, totally. All right, so then this needs to come there. And this can come over here. Maybe it goes up here. Let's see what that looks like. 
Oh yeah, not mad about it at all. Snapple. All right. Yes, this is very. You're you're right. It's very fifties. Um, and I kind of want this to go all the way. I don't it know. This will go all the way. Yeah, this will probably look weird, but maybe. Ooh, let's match that angle. What do we got? Ooh, maybe similar uh, look here. All right, where are you going at, Nick? I have. I think I got something I want to try and make the actual angled version of it already. So, I've got this as my. <laughs> we have two angle. minutes. <laughs> oh, geez. All right. <laughs> All right. This might be a part I, two episode. Here we um, go. Let's just take it. We're gonna go here. Get rid of the other T in there. Yep. And, and someone is asking, uh, do the serifs of the P's along the letters? I agree. This could be a thing. But I also think that I was playing around with this idea. What if this, right? Uh, I'm going to invert it. Transform, reflect right there. Like became this, right? That there's one down here that like this top part just goes away. I'm going to use the eraser tool. Don't do that. I just don't have time. Right? And it is like this becomes th like the hit of that Snapple, I think is really fun. And then this one maybe gets that uh, like stroke on the outside to give mm -hmm. it a little bit of oomph. Uh, and we'll bring it above that one. Oops. That's fun. I think that's really fun. And I just bring this down so that it would go all the way down like that. Oh, that's way better. Yeah, that's way better. I Ooh. need to work on the actual application of that, but I think that that's really fun, and I think it's like a cool idea to match the freaking Nick uh, yeah. to match the sprite. So, <sighs> Nick, Nick is <laughs> guys. Nick is so good. I hope you know that Nick Stop. is so good. Look at all the mess ups. Look at the T and the star. It's messed up. You We're gonna fix somewhere. that. Okay, hold on. Let me yeah. let me at least make mine blue to be like I did something. Uh, actually, here, let me make it white, and then we'll bring it over onto my little photoshop document oh and then we can I pretend like we did that. a thing all right all right look at that chat thanks so much for joining us um, oh, that was fast guys it was really fast okay so here's nick's uh doing sprite in the style of snapple and here is my snapple in the style of sprite <laughs> yeah. which is not mad i like i'm not mad about it once it got in here uh, so we will come back to this probably and continue it going. But as always, join our Discord. Let us know what you are making and how you are doing your Brand Slam. Uh, and Nick, let's do this again. I think Brand Slam oh, is really fun. This and, is, we sh it's a whole series. Nick, let's go. Let's come back next week because so just we're recording for next week. Next week will be a recorded episode. We're just going to continue doing this because we're already in a good vibe with it. So join us next yeah. week for the continuation of Brand Slam. Uh, and we'll see you then. It's Bye, a, whole everybody. New, a whole new show. Whole new show. Bye, everybody. <laughs>